at best REI funding, we have a no assholes policy and we take it dead serious. We have turned down a lot of money. We've turned down deals. We've turned down clients because we just knew they were going to be really hard to work with. And we love our business. We don't want to regret or have any qualms about getting out of bed in the morning and going to work. When I sat at the desk with my largest investor to date, who is worth in excess of $100 million, um, and I sat there and looked at him eyeball to eyeball and said, we have a no assholes policy. That could have went horribly bad, but it didn't. It went exactly the way I wanted it to go. They respect that, and they've been fantastic to work with for years. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, on today's show, we've got one of the nation's leading experts on private money, private lending, how to get funding for your deals. You are about to be blown away. Welcome. My name is Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And speaking of private money, I'm so excited to have my guest today because that's what we're talking about, how to get private money, how to get funding for your real estate deals, and also how to be a private lender. So we'll be talking about both sides of the table. But before we jump in with my guest, let me tell you just a little bit about him. He and I have got something in common, and that is we both started investing in real estate all the way back to 2003. And my guest specializes in a number of different areas of real estate, everything from creative deal structuring to flipping houses like I do, to wholesaling, to uh, landlording, and to what I just said, blending, right? And also an investor himself. Well, he's been, like myself, involved in thousands of transactions, um, you know, since he started all the way back in 2003. And uh, one thing that sets him apart is sort of myself, and that is he loves people, he loves serving, and he loves giving back. He's got a lot of specialties, but one of his uh, expertise is he knows how to solve problems. And in the midst of negotiating with sellers of properties, he's able to come up with creative solutions that actually gets him to close more deals than other real estate investors. So you're going to learn all about that here in just a moment. It all comes down to his mindset and his outlook of actually being genuinely interested in other people and helping people out. Well, he owns more than one company. He's got a private lending company that's called Best REI Funding. We're going to talk about that. And he's also got a real estate acquisition company. And then in addition to that, if that wasn't enough, he's got three national mastermind groups that are called REI Circle of Trust. Well, part of him giving back and an example of him being a true go-giver is he founded and he ran the Central Wisconsin Real Estate Investors Association for a number of years. And then that later on merged with uh, Wesco RIA. Anyway, I'm so excited to have my guest on. We're going to talk about private money now. Just as a side note, if you're into rodeos, He's got bulls. Yeah, he's got bulls, that bucking bulls they, they, uh, that they have in rodeos. I love watching um, a bull ride in my land. It's one of my favorite things. And um, he and uh, he, he also is generally interested in helping people through the adoption process, conception, all that kind of stuff of having kids. Hey, he loves people. There's no doubt about that. So welcome to the show, Derek Dombeck. Hey, Derek, how are you doing? Jay, I got to tell you, I don't think I've ever had that great of an introduction ever, but I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, when you got all that kind of stuff going on in your world, Derek, it's sort of easy to have an amazing introduction. So thank you for joining me and coming on here to the show. We're going to have a great time talking about private money. Absolutely. So, um, you know, among all the other things that you do, you've, you've flipped houses and done all that kind of stuff. Um, 
I assume you didn't start. Well, uh, let me ask. I assume you did not start out flipping your first house by using private money. Did you use more like institutional or traditional money when you started out? Yeah, Jay, the short version of a really painful past was I started out like most people. I bought a couple fixer uppers. I used bank money and parlayed those profits into more and more buy and hold properties until 2007 when the markets crashed. And uh, we pretty much lost everything at that point um, and quickly realized that by using banks, we had zero control over our business. And it was several years later as we were digging out and, and you know, the, the point of it, we never quit. You know, there was always a way. So we started learning how to structure deals creatively and, you know, work directly with sellers um, using options and, and um, uh, you know, subject to purchases and leases and all the different strategies we can we can stack up and kind of use together in a, in a creative deal structure. But we also started raising private money. And even to this day, um, I can't say we don't use banks at all, but we we use banks very, very little. I, I really enjoy raising money, especially from people that that don't necessarily have the avenue to um, get the returns that we pay them on their own. And it's it's great to take you know somebody that's got, a, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in a retirement account that was getting one, two, three percent return and and double triple quadruple that for them so ever since uh about 2010 11 um i took on my current business partner his name is jeff and uh jeff had never used a bank for any real estate transaction in his career going back into the early 2000s so it was it was kind of a great partnership i i don't want to say love at first sight because that would be weird but um it, it opened my eyes to all the possibilities that I felt, no, why would anybody give me their money to use instead of looking at that I'm giving them an opportunity to make money that they didn't have before? And once you get that sh that shift in your mindset that you're you know giving people an opportunity, it's completely different raising money. Absolutely, yeah. You and I even have more in common as we uh, start this conversation out. You know, I never even heard of private money, private lending, never heard of self-directed IRAs and all that, you know, conversation. Um, my first six years from 2003 until 2009, January of 2009 to be exact, I relied on the local bank to fund my deal. But you know what? I just didn't wake up one morning like you and say, hey, I think I'll go raise some private money. It didn't work that way. I'm assuming you had the same experience or a similar experience. I called up my banker and I learned after having two deals under contract that I was counting on him to fund that my lines of credit were closed. I had no funding at the bank. And I sure wish somebody had told me that before I had gotten houses under contract. But anyway, it's like, you know, what is it? The mother of invention is necessity, right? It's like I had to find a better and quicker way to fund my deals. So how did you get started and why did you get started in using private money? Well, I, I didn't really have a choice to a certain extent. There wasn't a bank in the world that would touch me anymore. My credit was destroyed. Um, and going through the rebuilding process, you know, taking on a business partner seemed like a wise decision. Um, the, the first business partner I took on, that that didn't end well. And when I took on my, my business partner that I currently have, um, we we built our business specifically with the end in mind and the end also including death, divorce, disagreements, arguments, buyout agreements, all that stuff. And when we said, OK, we, this is the volume we want to do. We, we picked a number, right? A certain number of properties we wanted to buy or, or flip at a, any given year. Um, as we proved ourselves to our, our investors that we had, the word spread. and more and more investors, you know, wanted to get on board with our experience. And that is really what segued into best REI funding because we didn't want our investors to go somewhere else with their money. Um, we had a lot of friends in the business that did not have access to money and, or were, you know, crippled by the banking industry as well, or at least restricted by the banking industry. So 
we became that monkey in the middle, so to speak, um, paying our investors, you know, putting together the transaction, funding the loan and servicing the loan. And, and that, it, that just started out almost as a hobby, but that hobby quickly grew to a, a full-time business to what is now about 25 loans a month that we close. And we do that all regionally within the state of Wisconsin. And a lot of people ask us why we don't lend, you know, in other areas. But the simple answer is why go into a different area if you've got everything in your backyard and, you know, we've got the growth, we've got what we want right here. So it's safer for our investors. It's safer for us. And to, I guess, cherry on the top, we still run a full-time real estate acquisition company. So in the rare event that we have a default on a loan, most lenders freak out if they have to foreclose or take a property back. For us, it's just another deal that goes from the lending side into our inventory. And we either finish the, you know, the property and sell it off or keep it. And it's, it's given us a really low default rate, first of all, because we, we educate our borrowers. We spend a lot of time at the RIA meetings and at other functions um, speaking and teaching and, and you know, giving back, but also educating people on the right way to use private money and the wrong way. So I feel like that's really the, the secret to our success is putting the people first. tell every one of our clients when they come to get us a loan, they are the second most important person. The first most important person is our investor. Our investor we can't help the borrower. And um, I can tell you our, our average loan default, we've taken, we've foreclosed on nine properties in 10 years. That's pretty um, low. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's extremely low. We, we certainly have other challenged properties, but we always work them out any way we can before we go through foreclosure. So, you know, averaging 25 loans a month and and only having two or three a year that go bad is not too shabby. There you go. That's an amazing uh, low default rate. Um, so what is your definition? And I know it's the same as mine. What is your definition of private money or a private lender? Uh, to me, anything that's private is non-institutional. Um, we, we take on only people. We have zero institutional money that we use and we've done that by choice. Um, great example for our lending company that was a benefit when COVID hit and the, the hedge funds stopped buying the hard money paper from all the large national hard money lenders we just picked up the phone and talked to our investors because they're real people and said, this is what we see coming. This is our plan. Um, are you on board? And COVID year was our best year to date at that time. Mine Had too. we been under the thumb of an institution, again, it's that lack of control. Who's really running your business? Absolutely. Well. I'm sure that I have a listener or two that is investing outside the state of Wisconsin. So as far as borrowing and lending, let's go ahead and give them a free gift right now. I know you've got a couple of books at the end of the show that you're going to give out, but Derek, I just finished writing and I'm so excited about this. This is my new private money guide. It's called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you building incredible wealth. I mean, for Derek, for myself, private money's had the biggest impact on anything that I've ever done in my real estate investing business. You can download this guide. It will put you on the fast track to getting private money anywhere in the nation. And you can get it at www.jconner.com forward slash money guide. That's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide. Download that, get on the fast track to getting private money for your deals. In fact, you have the same problem that Derek and I have had, and that is putting enough of that money to work. So, Derek, I got a question. When yeah. you discovered this world of private money, um, how did that make you feel? 
to where you now had all the funding. I mean, it's a good problem. You had all the funding. In fact, you couldn't even use all the funding. But how did it make you feel when you were able to break through and get all this funding that you didn't have before? What kind of impact did that have on your business? It's it's a little terrifying, to be honest with you, Jay, because you, you get to a point where you, you don't want to raise more money than you can place, but you also don't want to stop the growth if it's controlled growth. So we we had a phase in our business where we we raised more money than we could place, and then we had to start, you know, marketing. And then we've had times where we had way more loan applications than we had money available, and and it is cyclical. And there's certain times of year when we've seen trends. Um, the holidays are a good example. So it's it's kind of overwhelming. Um, by the same token, it's freeing because we've built a business that we can literally operate and run from anywhere. So great example. My wife and I just got back from a five week RV trip with our family and I worked hour and a half to two hours a day at the most from wherever we were that given day. So many people ask us, well, why don't you have more rental units? Um, love rental units. They're great. They're assets that grow in value over time. And yes, I can hire managers and yes, I can hire staff for that. But um, one lesson I learned early in about 2010 or 2011, it takes at least 40 hours a week to manage 100 units, 100 rental units. It does not take 40 hours a week to manage 100 loans. <laughs> not even close. Right. So I, I fell in love with the, uh, the control. The control, you, the lender has the most control in any deal, whether people want to admit that or not. And, you know, when, when one of our clients is having a problem with their tenant or their contractor not showing up or supply shortages or the list goes on and on, um, I don't lose sleep over it. But I would if that was my own deal or my own properties. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's lots of reasons and benefits to the real estate investor, to the borrower, to use private money. Uh, what are some of your favorite reasons? as the real estate investor, the real estate entrepreneur, to borrow private money versus institutional money? Well, speed is kind of an obvious answer, but it's to me, it's more than speed. Um, even our transactions that we do today, as we buy and sell, I still pay our investors to use their private money versus going to a bank and getting it for less, simply because I love paying my investors and, and giving them that return. And I don't have the the uh, proctology exam, I guess we'll call it, to uh, <laughs> to get that that loan. And I don't have th this used to bother me so much, Jay. I would have a, a loan officer sitting across their desk, which you know most people have sat in a bank. The loan officer's chair is taller than your chair, so they're trying to posture and you know get that position on you and and make you feel inferior. And for the longest time, my commercial loan officer did not own his own home. He rented a property and he was deciding if my real estate investment was a good deal or not, but yet didn't own a single property, let alone his own residence. That bothered the hell out of me, Jay. And yeah. to me, I, I just love the fact that I can empower people, give them a great return. We can do deals quickly. We can get our clients funded quickly. And it's just a win-win for short-term funding right? We don't do long-term funding. That is a different conversation, um, at least in, in my world. But the short-term and, and what we get to do for our clients, it's, I love it. So I've got a two-part question for you. It's the same question, but for two different reasons. The question is, how and where do you find private lenders? Now, part eight of that question is, is and, and you may have the same answer. You may have the same answer. But how and where do you find private lenders for your own real estate investing business? And where and how do you find private lenders to invest in your fund that you then loan back out to real estate investors? So it, it started in, in small numbers, just going to our local RIAs, the people you know in our area. And when I say local, um, best REI funding, for example, is the, the preferred lender for seven of the eight real estate investor association groups in the state of Wisconsin. 
and the eighth one, we're good friends with, with them. In fact, I'm speaking at their RIA next week. So we're in front of the people, myself, my business partner, as I mentioned earlier, we're up there educating people, giving away, giving away, giving away. Um, so of course, some are going to come to us to borrow money and some are going to come to us to say, I've got money that I need placed and I can't find any good deals or I'm just not getting the returns I want to get. Can we have a conversation? So so that part is very grassroots um, and has been for years. And then it just snowballs um, only because I live in Wisconsin. Everything snowballs about <laughs> 11 months a year. But it, you know, they'll start referring people to you. And it's just one conversation leads to another to another. As far as getting to the larger dollar amounts, and, and I'll tell you this, Jay, we are always raising money. That That's never stopped and likely never will because we do see growth coming. Um, but when we got involved on a national level, hosting our masterminds, um, we host a conference once a year uh, called the Generations of Wealth. And this is where we start getting referrals to, to people that had larger dollar amounts that were a little more savvy, um, had more opportunities to get good returns on their money, but like the, the safety of how we structure our deals. Um, to date, one of the largest investors that I have came to me as a, a free referral from a colleague of mine in a mastermind that I host. He got me a meeting and we took it from there. Um, and, and that's been a very, very large chunk of money for several years now. Um, and then it, same thing, it spreads, right? When you've got somebody that's got a hundred thousand dollars with you, they're going to talk to other people that have a hundred thousand dollars. When you have somebody that's got several million with you, they're going to talk to other people that have several million. That's just the trend. Probably because birds of the same feather flock together. I heard somewhere along the lines. Now... Now, you said um, uh, a moment ago that you're, from your fund, you're only loaning out to properties that are located in Wisconsin. However, if um, someone wants to invest with you in the fund and get, you know, an above average rate of return, do they have to live in Wisconsin or can you take investors outside of Wisconsin? We can take investors outside and, and we have. Um, and it, it is a, we, we've got two different funds set up. So we have one fund where you do not have to be accredited. We have another fund where you do have to be accredited. And, and tell and tell us what uh, is the definition of an accredited investor? Well, I knew Jay was going to put me on the spot. I might not get this 100% right, Jay, but um, you will. It, it's supposed <laughs> to, you're supposed to have at least a uh, million dollars net worth, not including your primary residence. Or is it two hundred fifty thousand dollars annual income? That may be three hundred thousand now. I, well, I you've got if it's two fifty um, individual if you buy yourself total household three hundred or more. There it is. Yep. Yeah. So uh, very good. I didn't know I was getting a test today, Jay. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make that clear, you know, to our listener that yeah. uh, if they're not living in Wisconsin, they certainly have the opportunity to uh, reach out to you, and we're going to give your contact information here uh, at the end of the show and in the show notes as well. What's your most effective method for raising private money? And I think you just said it when you talked about give, 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 which is AKA for educate, 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 right? It absolutely is. Um, when, when we kind of popped into the national scene a few years back, we never had any um, idea that, that it would grow the way it did. Uh, our, our first mastermind, for example, was was just a group of us from all over the country that knew each other. We were all friends. And we decided, why don't we rent a big fancy house somewhere different every six months and, and go hang out and help each other? Nobody was in a competitive or a competing market, so nobody had any reason to hold back. We get to go to really fun places, stay in nice houses. Um, and and that was a free thing. That was not designed for anybody to to profit off of. But again, people started seeing what we were accomplishing and started asking questions. Well, how can we join? How can we join? You can't. It's a closed, a closed session. So we ultimately opened it up and started a, a second group and then a third group. Um, and that 
again, snowballed into the referrals and, and the discussions with, you know, mutual friends that you and I have. Um, it, it, it was never, I can't say it was ever done intentionally other than we had a vision for our lives. We had a vision for our business and it somehow it's, it comes together and one person talks to another, you just don't know what opportunities on the end of that next phone call or that next you know conversation, whether it's in person or, or shoot, it can just be on a podcast like this, right? Like I, I, I have no idea who I might meet because of the time that you and I get to spend today. Absolutely. That's for sure. Um, it's like putting that message in a bottle and throwing it out to sea. You never know where it's going to end up. Um, what's the third. So when you have a conversation with a new potential private lender, what's the 30,000 foot view of that conversation? What are some of the main bullet points that you cover when you're talking to a new potential private lender for your own real estate investing business? Not necessarily. Well, you could answer it both ways for it's your own real estate investing business and for your fund, if they want to invest in your fund, it's the same either way, Jay. Um, a lot of it is is you know the the vanilla, right? What what's our debt to income ratios? What's your return on investment? All that vanilla stuff. I will tell you what the most important thing that we tell every investor as well as every client at Best REI Funding, we have a no assholes policy, and we take it dead serious. We have turned down a lot of money. We've turned down deals. We've turned down clients because we just knew they were going to be really hard to work with. And we love our business. We don't want to regret or have any qualms about getting out of bed in the morning and going to work. And the reason we love our business is because the clients, the investors, our staff, everybody is easy to get along with. Um, when I sat at the desk with my largest investor to date, who is worth in excess of $100 million. Um, and I sat there and looked at him eyeball to eyeball and said, we have a no assholes policy. That could have went horribly bad, but it didn't. It went exactly the way I wanted it to go. They respect that. And they've been fantastic to work with for years. What's, your, really definition, think, what's your definition of a no hassles policy? Um. If, if we have an investor that is going to call us every week asking, you know, what their balance is, where's their money, why didn't we put it into property A instead of property B that we chose to put it into? Um, and and that's, that's kind of annoying, but it's then it gets to the ones that they, they really, really want you to do everything their way. And I can respect that if we had one investor or two investors. But when you're talking about many, many, many investors, um, the, the time, the bandwidth isn't there. Like <laughs> we want to cater and take care of our investors. We want them to be safe. We want them to be happy. But you got to remember, Jay, we started with investors that were in a 25 to 50 to $75,000 range. And when you start getting 20, 30, 40 of those, and they have $25,000 in your fund and they're taking all your time, you're not be able to cater to the client, to the borrower, <laughs> right? Um, and so, but the real assholes are the borrowers that, you know, try to, to rob and steal from you. The ones that commit fraud, the ones that try and take out, uh, you know, money out of their construction escrow with fraudulent information, fraudulent receipts. Um, you know, we've had all these things happen over the years and, and we really try to weed that out as early as possible. Makes a lot of sense. Um, you said a few minutes ago that you see growth coming. So take a look in your crystal ball for me and tell me what you see the market doing over the next six months, year, or as far down the road as you want to look. Well, it's, it's, I would say it's different for my personal real estate company because we don't have a lot of creative deal structuring in Wisconsin as far as competition. So I see a lot of fun for myself and our company in regards to um, subject to purchases, options, lease options, seller finance transactions. Um, Again, we just don't have a lot of competition on the global level or at least the regional level in Wisconsin. We can still buy cash flow here. 
Um, it's getting tougher, but there's a lot of our, our clients in Milwaukee that are still able to buy cash flow properties as the market softens, as the prices come down, we don't foresee rents going down. Um, so I think that they'll be able to get a lot of better deals. We've seen a little bit of a change the last three months. Uh, about half of our clientele are people that are going to buy a, a property, fix it up, get it rented, and then refinance us out with a bank. Some of those applications have fallen off because bank rates have gone up and a lot of these people did not figure their cash flow on interest rates that were two or three points higher than when they bought the property four or five months earlier. So we're seeing a little change there, but now our applications are starting to increase on the fix and flip side uh, because people are starting to be able to get a little bit better pricing and building materials, they're, they're leveling off. Um, anything that's wood materials has gone down. Anything that's petroleum based has gone up. Lead times are slowly starting to get caught up. So I would say six to 12 months from now, everybody's going to realize we are currently in a recession. And um, I think that the landlords that have money available are going to pick up more rental properties. The, the fix and flip guys, I still think regionally will do okay. Um, they won't be making the huge profit margins that they've made in the past couple of years, but it's been harder for them to find deals in the last couple of years. So true. So true. Well, final question, uh, Derek, if you were starting all over again from scratch, what would you do differently in your business? Um, I would never use a bank. <laughs> the exception. I, I actually mean that I, I would, the bank would be my third option um, on any transaction. So when I make an offer to any homeowner, um, my first offer is going to be cash and I'm going to use private investors for that. My second offer is going to be terms depending on if they have financing in place or not. So I might buy it sub two. If they own it free and clear, I might try to, you know, work out a seller finance transaction. And the third way would be leasing and, and using options. I really enjoy using options. I don't have a lot of competition on that up here. And, uh, you know, being able to control that property with without necessarily owning it has done very well for us. So starting over, I would 100% concentrate on learning creative deal structuring and then how to stack them together. Like subject two is not creative. Lease options are not creative. Land contracts are not creative. But when you start stacking them together, buy a property sub two, put a lease option tenant into the property but bring in a private, you know, small IRA friend, you know, financial friend of yours to fund the rehab on it and give them, you know, a piece of the upside someday in the future. Um, it's kind of stacking them together. And that's what we really love doing. That's awesome. Well, Derek, I know people want to continue the conversation with you. They may be interested in learning more about your fund and how they can uh, get above average returns. And I believe you got a book or two that you'd like to give away. So let me turn it over to you to uh, give out all that good stuff and information. Awesome. Well, not to compete with Jay's book, because I'm sure his is already out. But we are we I am authoring a book specifically on the entire process of private lending from start to finish and, and all the, the gory details in between. It's coming out. It'll be November, December. Um, I'm more than happy to give anybody on your show a, a, an e version of it if you just send me an email. Um, my email should be on the screen, but it's Derek at bestreifunding.com. I actually check that email and I respond to those emails. So if somebody wants the book, just shoot me a message. We'll throw you on the list as soon as the book is published and we got the e version. We'll just automatically send it out to y'all. Hey, Derek, I want to make sure everybody knows the spelling uh, so uh, we get that right. So Derek's email address, uh, just shoot him an email and say in the subject line, want your book or want your books. His email address is Derek, which is spelled D-E-R-E-K, Derek, D-E-R-E-K at best, R-E-I funding.com. Again, that's Derek, D-E-R-E-K at best reifunding.com. Back to you, Derek. That's perfect, Jay. Um, and again, anybody that wants to talk about investing, whether it's with me or not with me, 
I, I love talking about this stuff. So more than happy to, you know, to talk to you. Um, we also, I have a, a second book, which is a collaboration book I'm, I'm putting together with a bunch of other really great authors. More than happy to give that one away as well. And um, then the last thing I would bring up is if you want to get involved in our conference, um, it's called the Generations of Wealth Conference. And, and the reason I bring it up is I'm really proud of the fact that we we encourage people to bring their children to the conference, especially 10 and older. Um, and we don't charge anybody to bring their children. The uh, The conference is around centered around um, advanced real estate strategies. We bring in awesome non-selling speakers, but we only have conference four hours a day and the rest of the day is networking. And then we have a town hall session in the evening, which is more interactive. It happens to be in Cancun, February of 2023. Um, that website is gowvoyage.com. And we'd love to have you and your children. We really, I love seeing my kids building a network from across the country with other kids who have parents that are freaks like us. <laughs> just don't think the way mainstream, you know, America does. So uh, that's that's the other thing. I'd love to love to meet anyone and everyone. And by the way, if you do send me an email, please just in the subject line or in the body, just let me know that, you know, you saw me on Jay Connors or heard me on Jay Connors podcast. I, I really just I want to be able to appreciate Jay and, and give back to him as well. Awesome. Derek, thank you so much for offering those free gifts and the uh, invitation to the conference. And um, as importantly, thank you so much for your time and sharing your experience. It's been my pleasure, Jay. I really, really appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of the show. I'm so glad you decided to join in and listen to us. Uh, I really need your help. If you have a friend, family member, a business associate that you believe would really benefit from listening to this show, be sure and share the show with them. I really would, would appreciate that. In addition to that, um, I really place, uh, appreciate the likes and the shares and the subscribes. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and click that bell so you don't miss out on any notifications of our upcoming shows. Thank you for joining us and be sure and join us right here on the next show. I'm Jay Connor, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level, and we'll see you right here on the next Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.